got my Abby in the shop, and we're going to go over what it takes to put a 4L80E in and get rid of that weak 4L60. Here's a quick look at both transmissions. This 4L60E is the one that came out of my Avalanche. And they're the same for most years, uh, starting in the 97, 98 time range. Here's the 4L80E, and physically, size-wise, they've never changed. There are some few changes on them uh, in later models, and it's mainly where the cooler lines go in and out. Here's the cooler lines on the 60E. They're stacked right on top, just on the passenger side. On the 80E, this is the front, the outlet. This is the rear inlet. So you have to modify your cooler lines. Make sure when you're routing your cooler lines that that's the cool fluid coming into the rear because all the gear train is lubricated by that. The bolt pattern on both transmissions is the same. They'll physically bolt up. So there's no modifications there. 99 to 2013, it bolts right up without space concerns. One piece to pick up when you get your donor transmission is the dipstick tube. It's different and the 60E tube will not fit. Just in case you're wondering, the torque converter is different. I don't recommend a stock torque converter, especially after 99, because the pistons will crack in them eventually, and you'll lose lockup, and you'll overheat because the torque converter clutch will slip. So that's a brief overview of both transmissions. Now I'll do a walk around and tell you what it physically takes to put it in the truck. First off, it bolts right up. You can use your bell housing bolts and the transmission will bolt to the engine without any fanfare. But, you'll need a new flex plate, a flex plate spacer, and bolts. What I used is an SFI approved flex plate and one of the factory GM spacers with ARP bolts. I tend to go a little overkill on things. Here's the modifications to the transmission cooling system. I used the factory 4L60E lines, cut the return, and installed a piece of flexible hose to lengthen it. From there, I used all the factory stuff into the radiator, but I did install an external cooler out in front. I do this on any vehicle, no matter what transmission it has. Now onto the drive shaft. You've got to get a different front yoke that fits the 4L80E and matches your U-joints on your factory drive shaft. Drop it off at a shop you trust, have them shorten it, and balance it. Next, the cross member. It has to be cut and moved back. There are places that make ones that bolt in. I chose the cheap route because I got pieces of metal laying around. It's about three to four inches it has to move backwards. The factory trans mount works. And once you move it back, weld it in place, I use some round tubing to add extra support up in the front. Almost 70,000 miles on the swap with no issues. I imagine it's okay. Showing with my hand here just to give some reference of how far it moves back. 
minor surgery. The factory 60E plug works just fine. They're the same plug, but on a 60E, it is over here on top of the transmission, like right above the pan. And on the 80E, it comes in through the side. Ouch, that's my head. If you heard a bong, sound like a watermelon. First step is pull out the pin retainer. The little Barbie picnic table. Don't lose it, you can't buy them. And then we'll go from here. You're gonna pull out first pin S, and you tape that one back. You take out pin U and put it in pin S. Next step is you take out pins K and V, and you'll leave them out, cut the ends off of them, and you're gonna connect them to the new speed sensor connector, which goes to the input speed sensor. Now put your connector back together. Here's the input speed sensor connector and the input speed sensor just behind the park neutral safety switch. Now on to the TCM. It is located right behind the main engine computer on the bracket. And it snaps out of the bracket. Unplug your connector. Once the connector's unplugged, which can be a booger if it's never been taken out before. Here's what it looks like when it's taken apart. There's only one wire to move. You take pin 45 out, and then you move it over to pin 26. Put it all back together, plug it back in. That's it. The next piece that you'll be doing is programming the transmission controller. The transmission controller is a T42. And I'll tell you this, I use EFI Live for most of my tuning. I do use HP tuners when I have to, but I like EFI Live better. Um, what you're gonna pay close attention to is that top line right there, operating system. And that right there, that 24, 23, 53, 41, that's what you have to find, is that operating system number for a 4L80E. There are forums for HP tuners and EFI Live, and you can get all of that info there. So again, up here, when it lists everything, all about it, what it is, operating system 24235341 with the T42 the separate TCM once you find that which I'll go over here and I found one this one right here it says T42 for LADE but that was for a diesel and it gave me all kinds of fits it just shifted really weird and lockup was weird and very harsh so it, that, those four lady E's were in vans, one three quarter and one ton vans. Find a Duramax, which that's the only OS I could find was for a Duramax that matched. So I dug and dug and dug and I left it alone for a long time. And then finally I found this one right here. So over a year later, I find this operating system just searching and searching nonstop. 24, 23, 53, 41, and I hit jackpot. I was so happy. Made a huge difference in the way it shifted in the in the um, lockup as well. Now, if you go in here, and I'm kind of clicking fast, but if you go into the transmission operation general and the parameters, so let's go to this other one, and we'll go to the same, and I've already got it open here. And this one, this is how you can tell real fast if it's an ADE. If you go into here, if you find this stuff floating around, if you look at the gear ratios right there, first gear, 3059, second gear, 1625, 1 to 1 third, and a .696 uh, fourth. So that's a 60E pattern there. Now if we go here and we go to an ADE, 
It doesn't have that steep first gear. You've got a 248, 148, 1 to 1, and a 0.75. That is an ADE gear ratio set. So if you're just clunking around and you can't figure out what's what, if you just download a bunch of them and start opening them up, if they've got that operating system and they have that gear ratio set right there, fifth gear, it's listed here, but obviously there's no fifth gear, so it's zero. And once you do that, then you'll go over here and you do a full flash, which there's nothing connected to this, so it's not going to do anything. But you do a full flash, and it's going to warn you, and it's going to tell you you're crazy, and see that red warning, don't do this. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. No, Will Robinson. Danger. But you'll go through a full flash, and it will wipe everything out completely and totally, and start over with this new operating system. If you want to tweak from there, uh, you can, and I did. Um, I won't go into that because that's just that, that's a rabbit hole you can go down. But it's parameters of shift speeds and shift RPM and all that stuff and firmness. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. And once you get that done, once it's fully reflashed, you go out and drive it, and it'll shift a little clunky for a little while, and it'll learn. Within just a That's few months. That's about it. I can't think of anything else. If you guys have any other questions about this swap, pop it in the comments.